Now, if you run an e-commerce store and feel that your conversion rates on your landing page could be better, then by the end of this video, you're gonna have nine high-level insights that might help you identify what's missing in your strategy that could potentially 10X the conversion rates on your website, and of course, increase your average order value. Now, in this video, I'm gonna do a practical website audit of one of the leading names in fashion retail, which is Fashion Nova. I think you'd have to be living under a rock to not be aware of these guys. They pull in thousands of visitors every single day, and I'm gonna highlight a few of their missed opportunities that if we were at Strafe Creative were looking after their site, would definitely do to increase their conversion rates. I'm gonna zero in on a couple of the key areas where they might be losing some of those sales. And that's gonna be things like looking at the desktop version, looking at the overall mobile version and the differences between the two. We're gonna be looking at some elements on the individual product page. And for me, one of the biggest areas of improvements is gonna be their checkout flow and how people navigate through that. So let's dive in. So we're gonna focus to start with on the mobile version of the site. And that's because I think, you know, we're mainly coming from social media. The site does feel very optimized for mobile actually i think the mobile experience is pretty much bang on there's definitely some missed opportunities but there's vastly more missed opportunities on the desktop right and that's because i think this has been very much designed as a mobile experience so that's where we're going to start now the thing i would say is everything feels really busy there's a lot going on at all times um, there's a lot of things fighting for our attention. And this is one of the things that can be a major issue is you've got something that you really want to stand out. So you say, well, we need to do this. We need to make it really obvious to the user. So we make that stand out. And then from a hierarchy that now drops all attention. So then for you to make something else stand out, we then have to do something really drastic to then make that stand out. And this feels like what's happening here. So if we look at the top of the page, we've got this kind of what is referred to as like a, a hello bar. So like a little bit that appears right at the top of the page before we even get into the, the menu system. So obviously you've got a menu here, you've got one menu, we've got a second menu which takes you to your options and then you have a third menu. So this amount of real estate is, is really quite a lot of the mobile, right? It's probably taking up 20, 25% of the page with just loads of individual different options. I feel like this could be better thought through. Now there'll be reasons for this, right? Because they'll be like, well, we do have the main menu if someone wants to break down really detailed, but these are probably our biggest ones that we want to try to get people to. And then if there is a subcategory where you can click onto them, you can click through those as well, but it just feels a little bit messy. So we're almost on like a homepage version of the plus and curvy now rather than the homepage women. And I think that becomes a, a little bit confusing. So we need to consider that that feels really messy in all honesty. And going back to this hierarchy of color, because we've got so much going on up here, we have to use a really vibrant red to draw attention here. The red obviously feels, I mean, possibly too bright. It does probably make everything feel a little bit cheap, but also if you look at the prices, they are cheap. So maybe that's fine. Maybe like that's what we're gonna go with. So we can then tie into here. Now we don't need to worry about hover states or anything individual when we're on a mobile, but these are, I guess, things that we'll have to consider when we get to desktop. So we do have these individual versions down here. Now, what is nice from a homepage is we're giving the user lots of different options here is you can click straight into this 90% off. If you want to go to an individual price, you can. If you want to shop by a category, you can. And if you've got this far down, maybe you're just interested in the inspiration to click through somewhere. So I think they do a really nice job of these here. You kind of cycle through and you can get these individual ones. From a kind of home page, I think it works fairly well. And even this, they do this a lot, I've noticed on, a co on their pages, which is they almost kind of at the bottom of every page, once you get into it, they just almost go straight into category mode. But you've got this almost infinite scroll that you can go into. So if you're on a product as well, you can do that and you can infinite scroll down the page. I think that's a really nice little feature. And then you can always click this little arrow back to the top of the page, which works quite nicely. Overall, homepage fairly strong, very busy, probably a little bit too much going on, but, but overall it's not too bad. So let's have a quick look at, you know, I'm going to pretend I'm going to look for some particular clothing. So uh, I'm on here, right? I want to go into clothing, let's say. Because I don't necessarily want to look at some of the new items. Let's just go into here. And I like the look of this particular jumpsuit. So let's click into this jumpsuit here. Now, what you'll see is I have slightly skipped ahead on the category page. And that's because I want to focus a little bit of attention. So this video isn't too long on the individual product page. But we'll probably do a category page breakdown on another day. Now, when we first load in, much smaller menu now. It's obviously a lot simpler. There's less going on, which is good, which means the imagery can really stand out. I really like their approach to this gallery. So we don't have to have lots of arrows and lots of other items on here. It's very clear to the user just from the design that you should swipe across. 
I think that's a really nice way of uncluttering the page. And especially for the demographic, the age of the people who will be using the site, that will make sense. Now, if you have a slightly older demographic, um, they might think that this looks broken, so that's something you have to bear in mind. But I think for this demographic, that works really nicely. And talking of kind of color contrast, we then have this red over here to say it's 40% off, and it's down to 10 pounds. So again, really quite nice overall color contrast that we have here. And we do have this breadcrumb at the top of the page. I guess I would argue is, does that need to go right there? But actually they've probably done some testing on that. They can click back through that and that's quite nice. Nice, simple way for us to be able to click through the options. And what you'll see here is all of the key information that they think is important to the user is within what is called a fold, meaning that everything that they need without having to scroll down is now visible. So you can see the imagery, you can see the price, you can see the reviews, you can change the color, you can see the sizing, size guide, and you can either add to car or add to bag where you can favorite it. In theory, that might be what most people need. Now, if people like the look of it, but aren't quite ready to buy, this is where we get into these potential objection handling that we have to do, that people might have some concerns. So they might want to learn more around the fabric or how it does up or how it's washed or how it has to, does it have to be ironed? Does it have to be sent off somewhere? So this is quite nice. You can then get into the free shipping and then we can start to see some of the other information. Now it doesn't necessarily give me that information. And I do think that's probably an error. Like it'd be great to have an understanding of like the washing guide. It'd be great to have an understanding of some of that information which isn't being listed out here. And another one, so that's kind of option one that I would say is a strategy that we really need to be taking advantage of. And number two is, which you see more and more on sites now is, it's great to give a little bit of context to who this model is. So for example, this model is 5'5", five five. she's wearing this size. And that's quite a nice way, because even when you get these size guides and these size charts that you have, it's a really easy way to go, well, I'm similar to her, or I'm a lot bigger than her, or I'm a lot smaller than her. But you can then really figure that out visually in your brain. So you'll see this a lot more where they'll highlight the model's height, potentially weight, or just dress size, and then tell you what size they are wearing. It's also a really nice way of, you know, showing if something fits a little bit big or a little bit small. So this model here is a size 10, but actually they're wearing a size 12 because it's very tight fitting. That sort of information is really valuable. And not only will it probably increase conversion rates, but it's probably gonna lower the number of returns you get as well. Those are two really good strategies that we should be considering. Now, from a reviews point of view, I actually think they do their reviews really well. They highlight the overall score that's in there. I think this overall fit is absolutely genius and you're seeing this more and more. It's a really good understanding of knowing where it's gonna fit. And then you can click through to see more of them if you want and you can cycle through these. I think that's really beneficial. Even being able to highlight what size you bought. So size purchases are small and normally are small to medium. That's really, really useful information I think should be highlighted and is. So that's really good. And as I mentioned on the homepage, what they do quite nicely is if you get far down the page, in fact, there's two things happening here and I'll just go back up to make this really obvious is this has got a CTA, this button, a call to action. What do we want the user to interact with? Now, as soon as I scroll off the page, it then pops up here with a photo of it, with a title, with the price and an add to bag button. I think that works really, really nicely. Now, ironically, one of the things that I would say, I've, I've kind of ummed and ahed as I was prepping for this video, the more traditional place that you would put this is at the bottom of the screen. And the reason for that is that once I've clicked add to bag, it's then gonna pop the selector right at the bottom here. Um, and that makes more sense because your thumb is down there, right? So you can click on the option straight away and then you can do it. So I do wonder if they've already tested this because at the bottom of the screen, it's way easier for you to interact with your thumb. So that's something to test. But there's also something about it being at the top of the screen draws more attention to it. So I would say from a strategy point of view, if you do have a sticky CTA, it might be worth testing it at the top and seeing if that makes a difference to the number of people that add to it. And if it doesn't, keep it at the bottom. And if you don't have one of those, please have a sticky CTA kind of start to add in as the user scrolls down the page because you only have that split second when someone might buy it. And if they go, yes, I'm gonna buy it and they have to scroll all the way back up to the top, you might lose them. So we need to consider that. But overall, that works quite nicely. Let's add to bag. I'm gonna say I'm a medium. That would be weird to see me in this outfit, but there we go. Let's have a little think and here we go. Again, I think this is really nice. And this is what I was referencing before about very clearly a mobile experience that's on here, right? But then we've got some other options in here where I can flick between the actual colors and everything here and there. I can add it straight to bag. So we're upselling and adding to the average order value. So a really nice strategy of what they're doing here. They obviously really thought through this mobile experience. And I really like the way that does that. So we're just gonna go with the view bag. 
and then we get into this kind of shopping experience now this is going to be with uh, shopify you've obviously got your shopify pay here is a nice little thing we've got apple pay everything's been quite nicely thought out and here's our kind of reminder and they're doing again some really nice strategies here which is you need to spend a little bit more money if you do want that free shipping and that's quite nice because it's also got a visual representation so if you're only a little bit off that Kind of showing how full that is is a really nice way to trigger the user to go well i may as well add a tiny bit more and they've even bothered to put this add, kind of add items option in here we've got these move to wish list move to wish list and then we've got a big green option here to go through and you can actually obviously apply a discount code and then you'll see here at all points this is the proceed to checkout sticky button and this is what i was referencing on the last page that your normal cta button for a sticky one is at the bottom because that's where your thumb is so you would then proceed through and we are going to just proceed through for this kind of video now now what we get here is a very standard shopify section right so you can you can do your express buying or you can do your other delivery items and that's kind of it and that is fine there's not a whole lot of editing that you can do to a shopify area so we're not going to focus too heavily on that but the big thing that i do want to show is they have done a little bit of personalization on this with some of the buttons some of the fonts they're clearly on shopify plus because uh, some of the other pages some of the, the the lower versions of shopify don't allow you to make these edits so it's quite nice that we've got that to work with but if i just go back a page i want to make a reference to something here i guess i'm looking at this from a design perspective right is but everything feels really really tight i just wonder if everything would feel a little bit better if there was a little bit more room to breathe so even down to the my bag being this size if that my bag was a little bit smaller had some negative spacing around it, it allows everything to breathe now the reason i'm saying that is if we have a little bit more negative space around things it's easier for us to draw attention to elements so i wonder if we could make this buy 82 pounds worth of 32 pounds more i wonder if we could literally make that stand out more not with lots of bright colors like they've had to on some of the other areas but just by having a little bit more negative space around it's going to allow that to stand out a little bit more so that's one of the i guess the first place to potentially start on this page once we're into the bag probably makes sense we strip out some of this main menu like we don't really want to get the user distracted yes they can add to items again so they can get straight back but should we be removing the wish list? Should we remove some of the history? Should we remove the search? We're already on the cart, so do we need the cart reminded and strip that out? Again, it's going to focus the user that it's like you're in buying mode, you're ready to progress. If they, you've still got this add items, if you want to push them back, I wonder about just simplifying that down. Again, gives us a little bit more negative space, focuses the user more. I wonder if that would increase conversion rate. So I want to try that. Now, we do have these nice options here with this Express, which do work quite nicely, but they're a little bit below this fold. Now, I also appreciate this might be on, uh, depending on the mobile size that you've got, but especially on a smaller screen, you're not going to see any of that information. And the discount code, obviously really beneficial. I do wonder if that it's green, it's standing out. Does that need to be the main thing on this page? Could that be a little bit smaller? You can obviously reference that on the next page anyway. So there's a there's an argument to be like, do we need that there and then? And even just shrinking down the size of these imagery ever so slightly means we're gonna have a little bit more vertical space to play with. You can fit everything in a little bit nicer. There's some really great learnings from this mobile version. The desktop I do think does need some improvements, but I think that's because they focus so heavily on mobile. So let's look at that one next. Okay, so we're now on the desktop version. Now, if you've seen any of my other videos before, I speak quite a lot around the different ways that users navigate sites. The general three ways that people will navigate around is they will go straight for a menu system. That is number one. Number two is they will go for a search system. And number three is they will just scroll based on the page that they access it. So we are, we're doing fairly well with that. And I do actually think the mobile menu is a lot easier for us to navigate compared to the, the mobile version. I would say that it feels very busy. There's a lot of individual options on here, but they offer a lot of different things. So I appreciate that. I do wonder if maybe just introducing some slight variations in maybe even just a slight off white to columnize these a little bit more will make them a little bit easier for us to read and digest and easier we can make things to read the more likely we are to interact with it. I'm also surprised that the search doesn't get much attention. I did think about this on the mobile as well, that the search doesn't really stand out from a point of view of, you know, I don't know if I type in dress. I do think that the overall search facility could be much nicer done. As we go in here, we do have dress. Um, I can then look at, it's kind of polarizing these by, do you want category? Do you want the overall popular items? Then do you want pages? And then do you want product? I'm kind of surprised by this hierarchy. I feel like product should be one of the things that stands out. And I do think this has been very much designed for a mobile experience only. And they're essentially just taking that column system, which they've done on the mobile and leaving it as is. Whereas I feel like that's probably a missed opportunity that we could take up a lot more kind of um, space, like landscape space, for us to do something a little bit nicer 
with this, whether we want to really high out some of these products a little bit more, that we have some tags on there, really highlight what's a bestseller. We also have no reference to price on here, right? So yes, I like the look of that, but I don't know how much it is. So I'm gonna to have to click into it to have a look at it. Kind of makes sense that this search facility should be referencing the overall cost to me there and then, right? To save me clicking, to save me navigating around. So the search facility is, is okay, but I think there's definitely some missed opportunity there that we could really take advantage of. And as we scroll down, this is one of the things I was referencing on the mobile is it's very clearly mobile designed, right? We have these massive, large imagery. And on mobile, you don't have to take into account what's called a hover state. Now, a hover state is when either your cursor changes or something changes based on what you interact with. So what most sites would normally do, and I'll try and find an example of a hover state here. So here's a hover state. As I move my cursor, the quick add button then appears. So this is really useful on desktop because you now know what can be interacted with and what can't be. So what normally happens is there's, there's something that will happen on anything that you can interact with. So like this, these are clearly buttons because I can hover over them, but nothing else has a hover state to it. And I do think that's because it's very much mobile focused, but it does mean it's a little bit unclear to the user what can actually be clicked on and what can't be. And you'll be surprised that even, you know, things like this video, the video is probably, I can click on that video and I can go somewhere, but actually it just looks like it's a video that's playing. These can be confused and these can be construed as just, hey, these are just some options. So just highlighting out to the user with something simple like a slight gradient or a slight interaction point that happens makes it very clear. Again, really obvious on a mobile that these are gonna be clickable. I know there's an argument here that, well, how would they not realize that they're buttons? But you will be very surprised when we put video recording systems onto our sites to look at how users are navigating it. If it's not really obvious, they'll skip over it. So these are some of the big issues I would say, even just from a homepage, but across the entire Fashion Nova site, just for desktop, of course, is having these kind of interactive points, even just from a click point of view, right? Like if I click that, you'd normally expect some form of click interaction as well, and nothing is happening for the user. I'll try and give you a click one, does this work? So there's a click interaction. I know it's a size, but you'll see if I click medium, something clearly happens when I click it. So you need some form of feedback from the site to know that it's working. And at the moment, there isn't anything that's in place there. So that does need some consideration. I now added this shirt to my item, but let's click through as well and look at it from a desktop perspective. Now again, really nice, clean and simple. I do think the overall experience is much nicer, obviously on a mobile, but I don't think this is terrible. And the site is doing a sort of basic little bit of what is called parallaxing. So parallaxing is where, as I scroll down, these two things are actually moving at different speeds and it makes it look like the image is static and everything is then in control. So I do think that's quite nice. You've got some basic information here. Same sort of thing that I said on mobile is, I feel like there should be more information overall around the product, also around the model, just to give us an indication that could really help with it. And then as we scroll down, you know, we've got this information and we go into these different options here, which is nice. So they're all fine as well. We're then going to kind of skip ahead as if we put some items in here and we can start to look at our bag. And again, it feels very much like let's design the perfect thing as best we can for mobile. And then we'll just scale it out to desktop. And the big difference on desktop is everything, as I mentioned earlier, everything's got a little bit more room to breathe now. So it feels a little bit easier to interact with. I would say that, and again, I would definitely be tempted to just see what the difference is, is if we got rid of this menu completely on this page just to see if we just hone the user in and get them to interact with it and it's very clear now that we've got this proceed to check out and we've got these nice credibility builders right below the button to interact with which wasn't quite as clear on mobile obviously we do have this apply here this feels like a major thing for them i'd be really interested to know if discount codes are something that they readily give out and they want people to be using because it feels like it draws a lot of individual attention i also really like the share your bag button i think that's quite clever there's a lot of information here and then obviously when we proceed to checkout we get the kind of classic shopify experience that's going to be on here the classic view of all of those individual elements again not a whole lot of changes to this you're kind of stuck with it if you're on shopify but it also works really well because it's a shopify one so those are some major benefits for us to go from so obviously fashion nova are absolutely smashing it at the moment they've done some really nice things on their site and there's definitely things for you to take advantage of here so make sure you have a look at these, compare them to what you're doing and see if there's a nicer way that you can add these into your site. There's lots for you to review there. So check them out, add them to your site. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye.